What is going on, everybody? Hope you're having a great day. So drones are something I have been interested in for a pretty long time now. I remember around the time when they came out, however, they weren't really obtainable or they weren't accessible in terms of their price range. I think you would probably pay upwards of $800 and up for a drone when they first came out. However, we are in 2022 now and manufacturers have realized, hey, we can't charge an arm, a leg and a soul for drones. You know, we got to make something that's going to be obtainable to everybody. So what you're seeing on screen right now is the DJI Mini 2. And I've had this drone for a pretty long time. And as a first time drone flyer, drone pilot, whatever you want to call it, I think this is a really good option. So today we are going to take a look at some reasons as to why you might want to consider the Mini 2 as your first drone and some reasons as to why you may not want to consider it as your first drone. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before I do go ahead and talk about these reasons, I just want to reiterate, I am a first time drone pilot, so I don't know everything, but I am learning as I go along. With that being said, the first reason you will want to consider the Mini 2 is because it is a relatively inexpensive drone and it brings a really, really great quality behind it. DJI has been one of the driving forces within the drone industry, and I think that this is a really, really good and well-balanced drone. Now, the price also matters because here's the thing. I think it's going to boil down to one of three things when you are purchasing or looking into a drone. You're either curious about them and you just wanted to go ahead and try them out and you may never go ahead and use it again. Um, you are looking to make it a hobby and you are interested in the flying aspect or maybe even the camera aspect of them. You are looking to make money with a drone and, you know, to also do that, you have to get your part 107 license. That's a whole different story. We're not going to get into that right now. But overall, yes, this is a relatively inexpensive drone and something that I feel if you take a risk on, you know, you're not going to be losing out on too much. Reason number two is if you decide to go a little bit more in depth with drone photography or just flying drones in general, there are a lot of accessories for the DJI Mini 2 since it's been out for a pretty long time. I believe it's something like, it's definitely over a year now. Maybe it's two years, I'm not too sure. But as you can see here on the table, I bought all of these accessories pretty much. Here you have propeller guards. Propeller guards are definitely important if you are wanting to fly within something like a forest. These will lower your chances of your drone crashing if something hits the propellers. I have some landing gear here, which I think cost me about $6.99, even though I haven't had to actually use it, but it's out there for you if you want. I have this here, which is a sort of propeller sustainer, I would call it in a sense. It makes it so that your propellers just don't start flying around and potentially snap off. It keeps them in place. And I have some lights here for flying at nighttime, which I haven't attached yet. I have two ND filters. I have this charging hub, which I like this charging hub a lot better than the actual official one, because this has a display on it. And, you know, I can go ahead and put these batteries in to it here, and it'll actually tell me the charge of those batteries. So this thing has been pretty useful. You know, the original one, I believe it only just kind of gives you like four dots there and it'll let you know what the battery life is like. But this thing has been pretty good to me. So this is available too. And I think this was on eBay for like 30 or $40. And of course, the last thing I have on the table here was the actual batteries. So I got these with the actual drone itself, but batteries, you can find them a plenty on eBay. So all in all, what I'm trying to drive home is yes, there are a ton of accessories. The next reason to consider this drone is because it is actually only 249 grams. It's very, very light. Now, the weight actually matters a lot more than you think with drones. And some of you may be saying, well, if I'm gonna be flying it, I'm not holding it, it doesn't really matter to me. Well, the FAA, actually begs to differ. So here's a little fun fact. You cannot fly a drone over 249 grams legally unless you register it with the FAA and take a test. So 
a drone that is 249 grams like this one is very, very important, especially for people who are just considering this as a hobby. I do have my FAA trust license. I paid $5 for that. I took the test, I passed it. You actually can't fail it. But either way, if you're looking to get into drones as a whole, this is going to be one of the easiest to fly because it is considered more likely a toy to anybody. So that 249 grams, that weight there, very, very important. The next reason the Mini 2 might be the drone you wanna consider for your first one is because they actually have protection plans for it, in-house protection plans. Now, if you're one of those people that's kind of just, you know, caution to the wind kind of type people, this won't matter to you, but it does matter to me because, you know, there are some times where I get a little bit crazy when I am flying my drone and I have hit things. I've definitely hit things. So for me, this actually makes sense. And for the Mini 2, the price is actually not that bad. So for the one year, I believe it's something like $49. And for the two year, I think it's about maybe 79 or maybe a little bit less. At most, it's gonna be 79. And what it covers is collision, water damage, flyaway, and just natural wear. And if you're wondering what flyaway is, I can't really explain it to you that well, but I will try. So flyaway can happen for I think a few different reasons, um, you know, it could be that you're flying in wind conditions that make it so that your drone can't fly back to you. It could be for, I believe, loss of signal or maybe something that happens with the compass, just any amount of different reasons. And that's going to be one of those things where, you know, you're going to be out of a drone at that point. You know, your drone is literally flying away. You're never getting it back unless you can find a way to do that, which I'm pretty sure there are ways to, but DJI will cover you for that. Now there is a deductible depending on the kind of damage and you only get a certain amount of replacements depending on the amount of years you do, which I believe it's something like, uh, let's see down here. Yeah, so for the one year you get two replacements within that year including one for flyaway, and I guess the other one would just be for like damage or anything else that happens. And then with the two-year plan, you get three, including two for flyaway and one for the other uh, kind of damage that can happen. I kind of wonder if you can just use two for damage. Uh, you know, what if you don't have flyaway, but I'm not too sure. Either way, the protection plan is here. It's something that's in-house, so, you know, you do have that option. Now, my next point is the fact that it has a really great camera. And to show that off, I'm going to show you a little video that I put together when I got a thousand subscribers and just to kind of show people that I was going to start doing drones. So yeah, as you saw there, um, the camera on this thing is really, it's really versatile. And I mean, I am not a photographer in any way, but I do like taking really interesting pictures and really just, you know, a lot of sunsets, a lot of uh, trees. And overall, the thing that interests me with drones, other than the fact of uh, flying them is their cameras. These are going to be devices that you can pretty much get into places you would normally not by using your own two feet. So yeah, the 4K camera on here is really, really good. The last reason I think this would be a pretty good drone for a first time drone pilot is that it's still going to be in circulation. Now, of course, the DJI Mini 3 Pro has been released and 
the thing about that is, you know, that's that's all the rave now. Everybody's going in for that. Even I am. I'm not going to lie. One of the things that happens usually when a new product is released is the old one starts to become less and less available. However, it has been said by DJI and you can even go to their website that the DJI Mini 2 is not going anywhere. They're going to keep selling it. It's going to be available in other stores. And all in all, the reason for this is because it seems at least the way I interpret it is that DJI looks to still kind of put a drone in every single category. So this is going to be cheaper than that DJI Mini 3 Pro, the, you know, uh, good, better, best scenario. So the DJI Mini 2 still has really, really good hardware, even for being over a year old. The DJI Mini 3 Pro is just going to be a newer version kind of of this hardware, but you're still gonna get pretty good stuff with this. So yes, it's still gonna be in circulation, which means support is going to be there. You know, you'll be able to get parts for it. You'll be able to find it in other stores. Even professionals still use this drone. So you don't have to worry about it going out of style anytime soon. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the reasons you may not want to choose the Mini 2 as your first drone. So reason number one is that there's only obstacle avoidance on the bottom of the drone. So see these three holes right here? There are obstacle avoidance sensors here. And what these are used for is when you're flying it and uh, you're pretty much trying to, let's say, go downwards. If you are flying over something those sensors can see, your drone will not move forward making it so that you don't make the mistake of putting it down in something like water, um, something like grass. Essentially, it's not going to come down unless you really want it to come down and you're doing that gesture on the thumbstick, which that gesture, let's see. So like if I was to go ahead and hold this down while flying it, and I, I hand catch my drone all the time. Um, I heard you're not supposed to do that, but I'm a little stubborn in that way. But if you press down, usually what I'm doing here is I am making it so that the drone knows, hey, I want you to land here. So the obstacle avoidance on here, albeit it's great, it's just very limited, of course, because it's only on the bottom. Now this next point is probably gonna contradict what I said about the camera, but I think it's also something to be aware of. So that thing is that this camera can only record 4K in 30 frames per second. Now, why does that matter? Well, in a world full of 120 hertz display phones and other devices at that point, you may want the same exact kind of frames per second, but the Mini 2 is going to top out at 4K 30 frames per second. Probably not a big deal. A lot of content creators actually still use 30 frames per second, but also something to know for someone who is flying this for the first time and trying to make videos. So before I go ahead and make this point, I want to say, please adjust your volume accordingly because after I am done talking, I'm actually going to turn the motors on on this just to kind of give you a, a sample of how loud it can be when it's on the ground and then one sample of how loud it can be when it's off the ground. So at this moment, you should turn your volume down because this is going to be unfiltered audio and my mic is kind of close. So this is the drone while it's on the ground, you know, not taking off in the air. Okay, so that is on the ground and let's move on to how loud this drone can get while you're outside. And again, adjust your volume, keep your volume where it is, because I don't know how loud this is gonna be. So 
So yeah, the Mini 2 is pretty loud. Now, this is something that would only matter to someone who is really more of a beginner. People who have been flying drones forever probably don't care about the sound. However, I know for myself, when I started flying this in public, I noticed that people would look at it and if they were in the same area when I was taking it off, it would draw in a few looks. So yeah, that's something to be aware of. So next reason is going to be the fact that the batteries, albeit they have a 31 minute max flight time, that is going to be in specific and perfect conditions. Now we all know perfect conditions rarely exist. So the thing is that there is no option for an extended battery, at least not officially that I have seen. If there is, or if someone has seen a battery that works better than the OEM ones, please let me know in the comments, let us all know. But as it stands right now, I have not seen an extended battery that can go past 31 minutes. And realistically, I have gotten maybe, I want to say max, maybe like 24 minutes or maybe even a little less than that. So that's something definitely to be aware of. Now, the next thing to know is that the batteries are going to be charging in sequence when using the charging hub. Now, obviously I'm not using the OEM charging hub. However, this one here that I have on screen is supposed to work the same exact way. What this means is if you are charging a battery, it will start with the lowest, go on to the next lowest, and then go on to the next lowest. So if you have all three batteries depleted pretty much, what's gonna happen is it'll charge only one at a time, then go on to the next, and then go on to the next. So that's something to be aware of, especially if you are trying to take this somewhere and fly it around for you know long amounts of time. Now, the last reason you may not want to go with the Mini 2 is because you have to use your phone, at least at this point in time while I'm making this video, you have to use your phone in tandem with the RC controller you get here. So the way that this works is you pull this up here, which I believe is an antenna. There's some antenna wiring in here. And there are these grooves right here where your phone is supposed to sit. Now, in my case, of course, first world problem, I have the Galaxy Z Fold. And this does actually work for me, but one of the things is I have a case on my phone. So I have to kind of take that off every single time. And you may not have to with any other phone other than this one, but overall, you can actually see my phone still doesn't technically fit within the grooves over here to keep it secure. So if I hit this hard enough, I can definitely make this fall. You probably won't have that problem with a regular candy bar phone, but something to keep in mind, especially because of the fact that this setup can take a little bit of time to do. You know, if you're getting out of a car, um, you're going to shoot somewhere, you kind of got to get this stuff ready. And on top of that, if you get a call, this can be interrupted. Um, there are just certain things that can go on here. Now, of course, one of the benefits to doing this, though, is that this has a battery in it that will charge your phone. At least it will try to sustain the battery here. So that's one benefit, of course. Another benefit, of course, is the fact that you do have the quality of your phone's display to see the video feed, of course. And that's something that may definitely have value for you. Now, I didn't really want to put this in here, but I'm going to anyway. This is the controller for the Mini 3 Pro. And this is called, I believe, the just the DJI RC. This is the DJI RC N1. This actually has a display built in and this is basically Android built into the controller. So at this point in time, this does not work with the Mini 2. Um, I don't know if DJI is going to make it so it can work with it. I would imagine so but just in case you wanna know how the controller setup works on here. All right, so those are the six reasons you should consider the DJI Mini 2 as your first drone, and six reasons why you might want to consider something else. In all honesty, this drone has pretty much aged very well, in my opinion at least. 
For something that's over a year old and that's still going to be sold, it must mean that it's popular enough and usable enough for people to want to keep buying it. So let me know in the comments if this is the one you're going to pick up or if you're going to go ahead and pick up something else, please let me know that also. I'm definitely open to looking into other drones as I want to get into this hobby a little bit more, but I definitely think that this is a very good starting place. So as always, wherever you are in the world, have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or a good night. And thank you for watching this.